So let's get right into the issues of vaccine mandates and a whole lot more in today's On the Record segment. So joining me now is New York City's top doctor, the health commissioner, Dr. Dave Choksi. So good morning to you, Commissioner. Thanks for being here. Good morning, Dan. Thanks for having me as always. So Dr. Choksi, before I get to all the important conversations on the COVID front, I do want to begin with the appointment of a new state health commissioner in Albany, one of your predecessors, Dr. Mary Bassett. Do you know her and how will you be working with her moving forward? Yes, I do know Dr. Bassett, uh, and she has expertise, she has experience, and she and I share uh, many of the same values and convictions around public health and how to best serve New Yorkers. So I'm really looking forward to working with her in her new role. And she takes over in December. So let me talk now about the big story, which are those vaccine mandates. As of this taping, teachers are asking the Supreme Court to get involved. Healthcare workers are fighting it. So the question here, doctor, why are you certain that a mandate is the way to go, even if someone is saying they cannot for, say, a religious reason? Look, vaccines work. We know that. Uh, and we now are seeing that vaccine mandates work as well, particularly if they're paired with easy access to vaccination, incentives, uh, and building vaccine confidence, as we have mm -hmm. in New York City. Um, we bring all of these approaches to bear together, and it has increased the vaccination rate. It's a major reason why uh, we're now at 5.3 million New Yorkers who are fully vaccinated. So healthcare workers, they, you know, they were heroes. They kept people going during the pandemic. They were praised. Everybody applauded and cheered for them at 7 p.m. each night, right? Who can forget that? And now they're being told, hey, face unemployment if you don't get vaccinated. Is that fair? Well, what I would point out first is that the vast, vast majority of healthcare workers are getting vaccinated. Uh, you know, we're seeing very high rates even before the vaccine requirement went into effect. Um, and, uh, and now, you know, everyone has to be subject to this requirement. The reason is around health and safety. Yeah. Um, and we all, and you know, I'm a, I'm a doctor and I have my own clinical practice. We all have a responsibility to take care of our patients. Right. And so this is part of uh, keeping the people that we serve safe. Uh, understood, doctor. And, and, and let me bring me to the next topic, which are schools, right? So far, hundreds of cases, classrooms and schools have had to be shut down because of breakthrough cases with, among staff. While you're mandating vaccines for teachers and staff, let me ask you this. Why stop short of issuing a mandate for students who are eligible? Um, yes, well, let's start with the staff mandate, um, which, uh, which I issued in uh, August and which has now been upheld in, in state and federal court mm -hmm. and goes into effect tomorrow. Um, that's such an important layer of protection for students, along with all of the other layers that we have. Uh, we have had some requirements for students, particularly um, for students who want to participate in uh, high risk sports or right. other extracurricular activities. Uh, and, you know, we'll see if, if additional requirements um, are needed. But right now, we're actually seeing a very good uptake of vaccination. We're at over 72% of 12 to 17 year olds in New York City who have gotten at least one dose. And we're going to push that number still higher. So, so we know learning is best in a classroom. I don't think anybody argues that point. But as the top doc, hearing concerns from parents about sending their kids to a classroom, you're a parent yourself. Were you for a no remote option? Um, I do understand these concerns, but we've been very clear about uh, our goals with school reopening in the first place. And it's a twin mission. The first part of it is keeping schools safe. This is so important for our students as well as the staff who are there. And all of the measures that I've spoken about um, yeah. help with that. The second part of the twin mission, though, is to get uh, kids back for in-person learning as much as possible. Uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the CDC, uh, and I and my health department are all aligned that this is also important, not just for education, not even just for the social development right. of our children, but also for their long term. So let me health. ask you this, doctor, without a remote option in sight, we keep being told that's not happening. Um, when do you expect, and this is the million dollar question, right? Vaccines for younger students to be approved because everybody wants to know that information. And then how quickly do you expect a rollout to be when it is approved? Um, yes, you know, we're seeing hopeful signs. Uh, Pfizer submitted their data to the FDA uh, and the FDA we know will be expediting its review. As always, it needs to be careful and methodical to ensure the safety and effectiveness in this mm -hmm. age group. But I'm optimistic uh, and we're hearing uh, November and perhaps even earlier 
with respect to the authorization for kids who are five to 11. Yeah. Um, New York City, as always, as we have been throughout the entire campaign, uh, once we get that authorization, we'll be ready. Good. Uh, while COVID is on top of mind, we saw the mayor roll up his sleeve, right? It's also flu, flu season. For those who are wondering, Dr. Choksi, is it safe to get the flu vaccine after or very close to getting the COVID vaccine? The answer is yes. Um, you can get uh, the flu vaccine at the same time as the COVID vaccine. They can both be administered together. Or if you prefer, you can get them, you know, a few days or mm -hmm. a couple of weeks apart. Um, but the most important message is that this is the wrong time to get the flu, uh, which means it is precisely the right time to get your flu shot. Um, you can visit nyc.gov slash flu and get all of the information about how to get vaccinated today. There is so much to talk to you about, and we're, we're simply out of time, and I don't want it to lose sight that we do want to talk about the new public health core as well. And so I'll invite you back so we can talk more about that important initiative because there is a lot to discuss, but we're simply out of time, Dr. Choksi. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Dan.